What up, ghouls and gals, dogs and cats, everything in between. This is your boy back, back for another episode of Let's Talk About Horror. And I am your host, Walter Doom. Yes, you guys have been rocking with me for a minute. And I know I've been gone for a minute, but I am back now, back from outer space. Back from the grave, like the undertaker says, rest in peace. Well, I was done resting in peace and I had to come back for another episode. So how y'all doing? Clap it up one time. Yeah, I just got to say right now, like, it's been like a crazy few weeks I know I've been gone for like an entire month after the Halloween episode and I just gotta say like it even took like some energy to try and get back into the grind of doing the podcast and recording the podcast literally by myself because I kind of spoiled you guys with like bringing all my friends on and we're just having some good conversation and if you guys haven't checked that out yet you guys could check it out anywhere on any platform on spotify youtube apple music google Podcasts, anchor wherever you get your podcast from so yeah all i gotta say is first things first i am glad that you guys are here with me and that you're listening to me today second thing if you don't follow me already or if you're not subscribed to me man go ahead and Go ahead, hit that, hit that subscribe button, hit that, hit that bell if you on YouTube, because I'm trying to come out with some heat each week, you know, I mean, I'm not no big insider podcaster, you know, it has all the information out here, but if you out here for a good ass time and to hear some real podcast shit, shit, <laughs> You know, got to mess with your boy for a minute, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to just stop being silly for y'all right now. I mean, I'm trying to like not get too loud because, you know, super late and shit. And yeah, <laughs> oh man, but how y'all doing, man? I mean, I know it's been a, been a while and I know I keep going on and on like I'm dashy, you know, with his long ass intros for Mario Maker, but how y'all doing? Again, I know I've been gone for a minute, but it's been a crazy couple of months in my real life. Well, not a couple of months, but a real crazy couple of weeks in my real life atmosphere. So I had to like take some time, some kind of mental health break for a minute, you know, because I mean, beyond this, you guys, I mean, if you guys haven't heard my story before, well, I mean, I don't really have much of a story but it's more of like if you've been listening to me for a while you know that whenever I take a break it's usually a mental health break and it's usually just trying to get my mind right trying to plan out net the few next episodes that will come out and it's just really like something I have to take time for myself and that's the most important thing that Everybody should kind of do, you know, take time for themselves, take time to like, you know, heal their mind, get their mind right, you know. But we are going to go ahead and talk about some things that's been going on with me. Now, first things first, if y'all been listening to Doom Time, which is on stereo every Wednesday, 11 to 1 with me and my good buddy, the timekeeper. Y'all would know that we kind of got into some controversy. I can't really call it controversy. I mean, what the fuck? What, what would it be, really, honestly? I mean, well, long story short, you guys, some person tried to cancel me and this dude. And what ended up happening is that this person ended up canceling themselves because they were being straight up racist to us. I mean, on this app, Stereo. You're able to like, if you're the audience, you're able to engage in the podcast with the host. And what this person did was they not only did it once, twice, but three times. 
they posted like a racist comment, which was monkeys, you know, making monkey sounds. Basically, they were making monkey sounds. They try and claim like they had some kind of button or sound effect going on, but it wasn't even that at all. It was literally them making the sounds themselves. So anyway, the one thing I got to say is that Twitter, you did your thing. (laughs) <laughs> Let's clap it up for Twitter one time. Yeah, Twitter, you did your thing that day, and I am really appreciative about that. And I'm still appreciative for all the people that kind of like sat there and listened, kind of told us what's up, and also kind of like, you know, people that wanted to follow us and rock with us. So, yeah, I'm very appreciative of that. But anyway, I'm not going to go in too much details about this situation because, honestly, it really doesn't even go without explaining. I mean, this person was being racist at the end of the day. You know, here on Let's Talk About Horror, we are more of an inclusive joint. You know, I know I talk about a lot of, like, black issues and everything like that, but... You know, it's it's more of an inclusive kind of thing, and it's like the movies that I talk about. You know, it's more it's more inclusive than just, hey, we're only focusing on black issues or urban issues or whatever. You know, I gotta get you know out of my vocabulary or my sentencing <laughs> when I'm on here. <laughs> I swear I talk like this all the time, like, yeah, you know, you know, you know, like, I don't even know why I do it a lot. But anyway, we are going to go ahead and talk about a couple of things that I'm going to do for the rest of this month. So as you guys know, um, for the past couple of years, I've been coming out with a 2020 rankings. Well, not 2020, but just usually a year in rankings list of movies that I've watched. Now, because this year has been a little interesting, to say the least, we are probably not going to get a ranking system, but I will give you guys my top 10 favorite horror movies of the year. So right now, in this month of December, I am actually doing more catching up on movies that have been released on stream because majority of these movies are going to be streaming movies. I got everything lined up. So, yeah, I mean, come the time of New Year's Eve, you guys should be getting a year-end episode. Yeah, so we're pretty much almost done with this year. You know, we're almost done getting out of this hell-bent year that has been what we call COVID. And, I mean, let's just take a moment, you guys, to kind of like... Be grateful for those that have made it through this crazy ass year. Um, We are not out of the woods yet because we are heading into 2021 still with the same issues, you know, dealing with COVID, um, basically the government going to shit. And (laughs) I wish I could touch base on the election, but I am definitely not going to touch base on the election. I mean, if you want to hear me talk about anything political, um, I get somewhat political on on Doom Time, but right now on here, not so much. <laughs> we just talk about horror movies here and our love for like horror movies and all the stuff that is going around horror movies, you know, news and everything, you know, it's been difficult to have news but speaking of news which we will go into right now and i know some of the stuff that i'm going to be talking about is kind of outdated for you guys but i promise like once when we get back into the motion again everything is going to be pretty much like up to date and pretty much things that i'm going to be talking about is i'm hoping is not more out of date i mean it's more something like you guys really enjoy hearing you know but if you guys love hearing me talk i mean definitely You guys could listen to this sexy voice all day long. (laughs) Yeah, but um, 
let's talk about some news real quick. So the first thing I want to talk about is like the Scream 5 filming being wrapped up in Wilmington, North Carolina. So that ended like sometime last month on the 18th. So right now they're pretty much gearing up to release this movie on January 14th of 2022. Um, I believe originally it was planned to be released in 2021, like the end of 2021. But I think they moved it into 2022 so it could have a little bit more time for them just to do some good edits and just to have the movie prepared as best as they could. Um, Hopefully around 2022, we are back to normal and we are going back to the theaters. But if not, I mean, hey, maybe HBO Max might buy this movie out (laughs) and we'll be watching it at home. So, (laughs) but um. If you guys don't know about Scream 5, so basically this is going to be a reboot to the continuing series, which also they're going to kind of like push more of like new talent, which is why they got talent like Jenna, Jenna Ortega on here, who was on the Babysitter Killer Queen sequel. And I believe she was also on Jane the Virgin, but I never seen her on Jane the Virgin before. But then again, I only watched one season of that shit. So, hey. But shouts out to Gina Rodriguez, fine ass, <laughs> as Megan and Stein would say. But anyway, <laughs> I know I'm going to be a little burnt out for you guys, you know. But as you, as we know, um, if you guys don't know, the movie is being directed and produced by the guys of Radio Silence, who also did VHS and Ready or Not, which I actually watched, which was a very good movie, by the way. I mean, I gotta say, for a movie about a girl who is marrying into the family, and the one thing she has to do is play this game, and all she has to do is survive, was a fucking crazy movie. I mean, I gotta say, Sam Weaving, absolutely stunning in that film, honestly. And, I mean, this movie is just like, if you've ever seen the movie Your Next... Yeah, I believe it's your next. Um, if you ever seen that movie, Ready, Ready or Not is just like is like your next. And if you love your next, you would definitely love Ready or Not. So, not real promoting, but hey, check it out on HBO Max. So, but back to Scream. So, as we know, like Scream has been in production for a while. Um, I can't remember when they went to production, but it was sometime um, in the mid mid summer of this year, I believe. I think they started in August, I believe, or July. I really can't remember, but considering the how Scream is usually filmed, it doesn't take long to really like film this movie. Um, there's not much effects being put into it you know a lot of practical effects and makeup is being put into this movie so there's not much that they have to do with like production as we know news reports have been teasing for a while that Nev Campbell may or may not be in the movie you know it's it's like that whole I guess tease of like hey will she or will she not come back Which, in the end, we knew she was coming back, but not only was she verified, um, Courtney Cox was also verified, David Arquette was verified, and also Miss Officer Judy was, well, Deputy Judy, I should say, played by Marley Shelton, she was coming back too. Now, as we know, um, if you guys have been really following the news, Matthew Lillard tried to put his hat into being in this movie again now to me i'm like well Stu actually died in scream one so how the fuck is he gonna be back but as you know matthew lillard trying to throw that little nugget out there for everybody to catch and honestly speaking i mean i wouldn't be surprised if this dude makes a surprise appearance and his definitive death wasn't so definitive after all. You know, it's kind of like he's going to be like on this whole Kill Bill shit where like the bride, she gets shot in her head. But, you know, she manages to survive the gunshot to the head. 
that's really what Stu is going to be. <laughs> like, he's going to be just like Uma Thurman's character and just magically, miraculously, some way survive any kind of, like, damage that was being brought onto him. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets brought onto this movie. The, the way I see it is any little teaser or any little nugget that's being thrown out there for these films they're more likely going to do this shit. I can't remember who did this shit to. Oh, wait, not, not, I, not, I remember. I remember Candyman was doing this shit for the new Candyman movie. And for the longest, they were saying like, well, we're not sure if Tony Todd is going to be in this movie or not. And to me, I'm just like, well, how are you going to have Candyman without Tony Todd? You know, it's like having Nightmare on M Street without Robert England. Like, it, that, that shit don't make sense. It's like having Child's Play without Brad Dourif, you know? But eventually, Tony Todd did did confirm he was going to be in the film. And, yeah, I mean, like, to me, it was like a no dub factor. Like, dude, you got to be in this film. Now, is he going to be in the film like how he, how he was in, like, previous Candyman movies? I don't think so. I think he's going to have like a very minimal appearance in this new Candyman film, which should have came out, by the way, this year if COVID didn't happen. But I mean, we can't control what happens in this world, you know, like a national pan, well, not a national, but a global pandemic. Who the hell would have saw this coming? But, but yeah, I'm just not really surprised that. Matthew Lillard is going to be in this film. So if he is, I mean, hey, just know that I said it here first. <laughs> just know you heard it here first, too. Anyway, um, but if you guys, for those that are like listening to, to me on YouTube, I mean, yeah, go ahead and put your comments down on what you think. Do you think Matthew Lillard is going to be on there or do you think he's not going to be on there? And I know I said Matthew Lillard very weird. <laughs> is Please excuse me. It's very late. It's like two in the morning. So yeah, anybody got a problem? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but anyway, my thoughts though, my thoughts about this movie is what is this movie going to be about? And the thing is, um, with most of the screen movies, they have a certain thing, which is kind of like poking fun at what what the horror industry is doing. So with the first screen movie, it kind of pokes fun at, oh, well, you know, horror movies. This is the tropes. This is what happens with the villains. This is what happens with the victims, you know, and he, and it's pretty much like, a sl well, not really a slap in the face, but more like a joke about what happens in these movies all the time. That that's what happened in the first movie. In the second film, second film talked about sequels. Third film talked about trilogies, and the fourth film talked about reboots. Now, I don't know what this fifth one is going to talk about because I guess it could go into any direction. Honestly, well, maybe it's going to talk about how like movies, well, basically like franchises they tend to go in the direction like they have they're pretty much consistent in their first three to four movies but then like once when it gets to like the fifth or it just keeps going on and on they kind of lose focus on what the movie is about and then like all this other bullshit happens and then old characters just return out of nowhere and then all of a sudden the old characters hey oh my god look at this they're the they're the villain after all you know like people that you don't really suspect like just you know they become the villain like in um saw like in the first saw we didn't we didn't even think dr gordon was even involved with jigsaw but come saw seven or saw the final chapter, or saw 3D, whatever y'all want to call it, it's still a piece of shit to this day to me. Um, we see Dr. Gordon 
eventually became part of Jigsaw's plan on torturing people like like all those people that were in the game in the beginning of the movie of the, of every Saw movie that we watched those were victims that Dr. Gordon was pretty much helping Jigsaw with you know he and he was pretty much like setting up those traps or setting up all the you know surgical surgical items in these people and everything because it I mean, it, you got to think, like, how the hell does Jigsaw know how to do all this shit? How does Jigsaw know how to, like, sew a key into somebody's eye without killing them? You know, how does he know how to, like, I don't know, um, sew somebody's eye shut or sew somebody's mouth together without, you know, really, like, putting some real damage onto them? And it it just really answered that question about like those trusts that were being placed in the movie. But the point I'm trying to make is like after like maybe around saw three or four, actually I want to say three, the first three saws were pretty solid. And even though I still like the following movies afterwards, I myself could admit like, the stories got weirder and weirder and weirder as we continued on. And a lot of the story, well, a lot of the story didn't make sense because you're telling me this guy who had cancer manages to like fool everybody. like, <laughs> And you guys could probably re- recall this conversation that I had with Jeremy of Northern Tier in an episode that I had called Director's Chair where we were talking about salt and how ridiculous this film got. So, yeah, I mean, that's just my thoughts on that. I mean, I don't know where this movie could go. I'm still like a big screen fan, so I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see the new Saw film that's directed by Chris Rock, too. I believe Tobin Bell. I don't know if Tobin Bell is going to be in this film. I can't remember. Um, but if anybody knows, definitely put it in the comments and what have you. But um, let's move on to the next thing that I want to talk about. Let's talk about some Netflix and HBO shit right now. Once again, once again, Netflix finds a way to disappoint me. Well, not really disappoint me, but they seem to kind of like confirm the disappointment that I know that they're terrible. And they continue to be a disappointment and just kind of limbo under the seams of mediocrity. So a few weeks back, or a couple of weeks back, I should say, um, Netflix was trying to buy the fourth installment of the monster verse of the King Kong and Godzilla movies, which is directed by Adam Wingar, who directed in some hand of VHS one and two in the Blair Witch movie. So his new movie, Godzilla versus Kong was, is supposed to be released by legendary films in May 21st of 2021. So according to the Hollywood reporter, Netflix tried to make a $200 million bid for this movie. $200 million. I, I, for one, am like, that's a shit ton of money, honestly, for, for a lot of us. <laughs> shit, Netflix, can I get some of that money, too? Man, I, I could use $200 million, you know? Upgrade this podcast. Give these people really what they want, you know? Shit. <laughs> but anyway, um, they supposed to, they were supposed to make a bid of $200 million but Warner Media blocked the shit. They blocked it. And you know why? Because they're dealing this shit to HBO Max. Now, if you guys have been living under the rock for <laughs> living under the rock, <laughs> like you're living un- under the wrestler, the rock. <laughs> but if you've been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, um, you guys would know that 
uh, I think this announcement came out last week, Friday, I believe, or Thursday. I can't remember when. Or I, like you guys really know when I'm like recording this. <laughs> I'm I'm so stupid, but um. It came out like early, the first week of December, the announcement, I should say, because by the time this gets released, I mean, who knows when you guys are listening to this episode, right? Um, But it got released, well, the news got released that HBO Max is going to re- release all of Warner's movies, all the Warner Brothers movies throughout the year of 2021 starting on Christmas Day and in in next year of 2022 I believe onto HBO Max now to me this is a game changer I mean I already got HBO Max so I'm not even tripping but for those that don't got it and have been kind of like eh iffy about it or I don't want to fuck with another subscription service. I already got Netflix. I already got Hulu. I got Disney and all this other stuff. You know, I'm going to say this. This might get you one to throw away the whole Netflix account. (laughs) I'm going to say this right now. You might already want to throw away the whole Netflix account because there's no point of holding on to Netflix, especially if you're a horror fan. As a horror fan, you should already know that Netflix is really horrible with coming out with content for us, specifically us, us. You know, they're good at like trying to pander to the black people right now, which I myself am black. If you guys didn't know already, if you didn't know, I mean, you guys probably haven't listened to me that long, but they're really good at pandering to black people like myself with now teasing us with some good old Moesha and some good old uh fuck I forgot who else they had on there and I'm and I'm trying to talk shit right now (laughs) but um oh yeah they have the Parkers and Girlfriends I mean shit shows that I used to watch when I was a little kid I mean (laughs) and it and honestly if you're listening to this podcast and you're black I mean, you have watched one of those shows before. You have definitely watched some Moesha, my dude. So don't even front and think like you weren't even watching Moesha. You was watching Brandy. You was sitting here watching her do those poetry slams. You saw when she was falling in love with Fredro Star, and then she went out with Hakeem at, in the end, who she should have been with in the first place. But that's a long story short, because I'm not going to get into that shit right now, you know? You know, we saw how they did Countess Vaughn for a minute, you know, and then she got her own spinoff show and shit like that. You know, and then they brought on Monique and shit like that. So they got the Parkers and shit like that. That that was cool. And they took Lamont Bentley onto some episodes of the Parkers, I believe, because apparently that character was going to the same school with her. But again, we're not going to get into that because that's not what this show is about, you know, but. I just want to talk about it. (laughs) Oh, man. Did y'all miss me, by the way? I mean, I know. I I definitely miss you all. You know, I do miss my five listeners that listen to me on a consistent basis, you know? And I always say, like, hey, I always do this shit for myself. You know, I'm not doing this podcast for anybody else. I'm doing this for myself and anybody else who want to rock with me, you know? I want to rock with you all night, dance you into the sun. Okay, you guys know it's like hella late because I'm sitting here singing and shit. (laughs) Like, why am I doing that? (laughs) But anyway, yeah, man. So back to the news. So HBO Max is taking over. I'm sorry. This is a takeover. It's like it's like what Jay-Z said. This the takeover and breaks over, you know, and and for Netflix, the break is over. The break is over, son. You're about to get buried, son. OK, I'm, I'm acting like I'm from New York, but I, I really don't know how these motherfuckers talk. <laughs> I'm going to just keep it real. But 
all bullshit aside, all jokes aside, really, I'm 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 being serious for the rest of the time being. But honestly, like this is a game changer. Honestly, a game changer. Now, before I talk about why this is a game changer and how this is going to affect HBO's numbers and everything, let's talk about why Netflix fucked up. Number one, Netflix has been fucking up for a very long time. Again, they don't have shit for the horror fan. They got some movies, but they got very few mainstream movies. And then they got a bunch of bullshit. Honestly, let, let's call it what it is. It's not movies we really care to see or watch. You know, some of us that just settle for Netflix because we don't have anything better like Amazon Prime, you know, which is better. But <laughs> yeah, um, if y'all don't have Amazon Prime, you're sleeping. If you don't have Hulu, you're, you're still asleep. But anyway, for those that really don't have anything like Amazon Prime, Hulu, Shutter, which also is like boss, but I'm going to have to say, I'm going to take it a step for- further. If you don't have AMC Plus, my dude, you are tripping. <laughs> you are tripping. Because at AMC Plus, look, 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 the AMC Plus, you get the cream of the crop. You get the Shutter. You get the IFC. And you get the, I forget what other, <laughs> other shit. It's like four things into one. And I'm going to say, like, I'm glad that I managed to, you know, kind of pull the trigger on the AMC Plus because I get to watch The Babadook whenever I want. I get to watch Human Centipede, all three of them, disgustingly, <laughs> whenever I want. <laughs> and yeah, man, I mean, it's just. It's really like, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say men because there's some women that's out there. And shout out to the ladies, by the way, that's listening to this podcast. Y'all, y'all rock because y'all managed to kind of overtake my male audience by a significant percentage on Spotify, though. <laughs> oh, man. But um, there's so many streaming apps that are way better than Netflix. Netflix has not been the thing to rock with. So that's number one. They they really don't have anything for the horror fan. Number two, these motherfuckers fucked up when they lost the rights to stream any Disney movie. Now, I know that they're still going to have Disney movies coming back to Netflix. And I believe that's supposed to happen in like 2022 or 2023 or I forgot what year that's supposed to happen, but it, it's, it's something weird like that because I guess Disney is taking their stuff off off of Netflix. So just so they can have their content on their platform. But eventually what they're going to do is that they're going to bring their content back to Netflix for some certain amount of time. And that's supposed to happen in 2022 or 2023. Again, I can't remember what year it's supposed to be, but it's supposed to be around that time. So, but as you guys know, like, it it started with Disney. It literally started with Disney. After Disney lost, well, after Netflix lost Disney because Disney was making their own platform. Then Netflix lost the rights to Friends and The Office, which went to Warner Media and NBC Universe's platforms. So basically HBO Max and Peacock, which is another which is another streaming service I have to say is a sleeper by the way. I mean personally for me I think it's a sleeper if you have not checked out Peacock. Peacock is definitely a really good streaming app especially if you really like TV shows and they do a lot of live shows too. So if you're really into that kind of thing, definitely get it. And it's free. That's the most important thing. It's free. Now, if you want to pay, you could definitely pay. And not to mention that if you do pay 
for the horror fans and for the fans that love classic horror movies, you get to stream movies like Frankenstein. And that's the only one I can really remember that you have to unlock. <laughs> Oh man, but um, I'm gonna tell you this though. Um, I believe at the end of, unless it already happened, but I believe it's supposed to be the end of this this month. Um, they're supposed to be getting Child's Play two and three. So two and three is no longer on HBO Max. Um, honestly, two is good. No one gives a shit about three anyway. I mean that's that's just facts because that was a weird movie to begin with. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, those movies are definitely heading to Peacock. So yeah, I mean, if you guys are like super Chucky fans, definitely head to Peacock or get the Peacock app. Oh yeah. And here's another app that I always say, get it. If you don't got it Tubi, like Tubi is such an amazing app. Like when I first discovered it. I was amazed by all the movies that I was able to watch. I couldn't believe it. Like, I was really shocked. But, yeah, um, Netflix, they really do have a lot to, they really need to change a lot of what they're doing. I feel like they really need to probably, like, not shut the app down, but kind of, like, I guess restructure their model and really try and, like, get a lot of more movie companies I guess on board with them but I mean Netflix really I mean at this point can we really say Netflix is really like what it was 10 15 years ago because we can't we can't we really can't honestly like the first time I had Netflix this was probably like the year 2013 or 14 now that means I had Netflix for a while I mean, I didn't get it, like, the first time, like, how everybody used to get it for, like, eight bucks, but I believe when I had it, it was, like, ten bucks when I first had it, and, yeah, now it's moving to, like, seventeen dollars with some bullshit, because it's, like, we're paying seventeen bucks for an app that doesn't really do shit, (laughs) honestly, but come out with a bunch of originals that aren't really that good, let's be honest. I mean, how many of you guys really do love every single Netflix original that has been coming out? Now, I'm pretty sure The Queen's Gimmick is really a good show and everything, but come on, dude. Like, let's be honest. Like, nothing about Netflix right now is really that good. So, yeah, Netflix is going to be Netflix. Don't expect Netflix. Like, if you want to watch movies, like good movies that are actually in theaters I mean and I'm not taking away that Netflix doesn't put out good movies because they do Vampires vs. the Bronx is a hell of a fucking movie by the way his house is a hell of a fucking movie and I advise any of you to go watch that movie the babysitter movies they're cool I wouldn't say they're great but you know, they get the job done. <laughs> I make it sound like a prostitute transaction or something. Like, yeah, I mean, you're just giving me a hand job, you know. I, I mean, at least it gets the job done. <laughs> All right, we, we're going to get a little bit raunchy for a bit because, honestly, these days I'm like, I'm trying to restructure the way I'm talking to you guys, you know. I'm trying to make y'all kind of enjoy the personality, you know, enjoy more of how Doom is. You know, so to all you ghouls and gals, cats and dogs and crickets, <laughs> and cr- <laughs> I I hope you guys are really just enjoying yourselves and just having a good laugh because it is going to get morbid later on in the show. So it's going to be less jokes. Um, But anyway, we'll go. We'll come back to to this topic about Netflix. So, yeah, I mean. Overall, like, I loved my first time experience, like, having Netflix. But since having it and seeing what they've been doing and how they're trying to change everything, not so much. Not so much. I haven't been a fan for a while. 
I mean, Netflix is like The Simpsons. You know, it's there. Everybody, you know, seen it before, but, you know, after a while, you stop watching it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> at least in my experience, I mean, I've been treating Netflix like The Simpsons, you know, because right now, to me, HBO Max and Amazon Prime is like Family Guy and fucking Rick and Morty and shit like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't go against the original. You can't go against the OG too much. But you can't critique the OG for being a piece of shit after a while. I'm just saying. But anyway, moving on from like Netflix being terrible, what is HBO Max all about? Now, I got to say, like, again, I was kind of like hesitant on pulling the trigger on that one. But they sent me like a promotion deal and whatever. Well, they had a promotion deal going out. And I was just like, sold. <laughs> So, yeah, um, did the promotion deal, got the, got the app, got the, uh, got the account. And yeah, I mean, I gotta say like, I spend probably much, not more time, but almost as equal time on HBO max as much as I do on Amazon prime and Hulu. And that says a lot. Now, I'm kind of neglecting my Tubi a little bit, you know. So, I mean, just fair warning for you guys. There might not be a must-watch Tubi movie of the week. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I yeah, it's just not enough time in the world. I mean, again, but if Netflix, you know, Netflix, Netflix, listen, listen, listen Netflix. You know, y'all got $200 million. Y'all trying to throw it out somewhere. You know, you know, you could throw it over here to your boy. You know, I'm hey, if you want some content, I'll give you some content, you know. Help you out. I'll give you I'll give you like what you want, you know. <laughs> but uh <laughs> that one sound like a real bad like proposition, by the way. <laughs> but um Yeah, so HBO Max is pretty good. I mean they got a lot of movies that I will never see in our Netflix's catalog. I mean, they got all the Godzilla films. They got all the Alien films. Uh, I I am really shocked they got that. They got Casablanca. They got Mulholland Falls, which is one of my favorite noir movies, by the way. Or I should say neo-noir movies. Because it's not really a noir film. I mean, it's neo-noir you know, but yeah, I mean, I just got to say, like, I am amazed on what HBO Max is actually delivering. And I'm and I know like a lot of people right now because HBO Max isn't really doing that good. But I think this might push up their sales. Honestly, I mean, because. Right now, we all know HBO Max is kind of paired up with AT&T. AT&T is paired up with Warner. Warner is the big, you know, guy and everything and all of this, you know, making everything happen. So, yeah, if you got an AT&T phone or internet, you get a, you could get HBO Max for free. And I think this, like, lasts for a year or some shit like that, or I don't know. I didn't bother to see the promotional deal. <laughs> Maybe I should see so I could change up like, you know, how I have this HBO Max shit. <laughs> but anyway, um, since HBO Max has been released, um, they've been kind of struggling in the department of getting subscribers because, well, first off, they tried to release the app sometime last year, but they had a few technical issues, which delayed them by six months. And... They came out during the time of the pandemic. Now, as we all know, this is probably the worst time for anything to come out right now. Anything. Anything to come out. So, yeah, I don't know how y'all out there buying PlayStation 5s and shit like that. I mean, hey, y'all must got money stacked to the ceiling or something. Or y'all running them... Um, 
them um, unemployment scams, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, they're, when they first released, their f- subscribers started off at like 4.1 million. And that's going against Disney Plus's 55 million that they accrued over like the first time they got launched and over the m- following months. But I gotta say, that's a lot of fucking people. And supposedly, like, HBO Max has, like, 23.6 million paid paid subscribers for, like, their old HBO apps. And all the people that had the old HBO apps, they got moved to HBO Max. Now, honestly, talking about all the apps that HBO has... It's very confusing, by the way. I mean, they had, like, HBO Go, HBO Now, and now they got HBO Max. And to me, it gets very confusing if you have any of those subscription services. Now, I don't know how much they were charging for everybody for these old apps, but I'm assuming that they were charging relatively the same price. But if... They saw it simply, well, if the, if HBO saw it simpler by just canceling all those other apps and pushing everybody into HBO Max, which what it sounds like is what they did, that will be, like, to me, the smartest thing that they could do, honestly. But, I don't know, it just comes off as if, like, they really just did not know what they were doing at first, and they were struggling to kind of get subscribers to come into the service insert till now (laughs) when they made that announcement that they were merging with warner well actually they weren't merging with warner i mean they warner pretty much owns like 25 percent of hbo so it's like this shit was inevitable like honestly like between at&t warner and hbo all working together this shit was literally just inevitable it was gonna happen whether we wanted wanted it to happen or not and honestly this is a game changer for anybody honestly so if you are looking for movies like wonder woman 1984 which comes out on christmas day the matrix which comes out next year of december or the suicide squad movie or Godzilla vs. Kong, or for us horror fans, Malignant, or The Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It, it is all going to come to HBO Max. Now, also, another thing that's going to make this a game changer, I mean, we're talking about a streaming service, is now going to take over movies that are supposed to be coming to theater. But they're still going to theaters. That's one thing they said. These movies are still going to be going into theaters. But they're going to be released the same time on HBO Max. That to me is like the biggest fuck you to every single movie theater out there. Every single movie theater chain. Now, if you guys have been rocking with me for a minute, you guys already know how I feel about movie theaters. Personally, I don't give a fuck about them. I really don't like them, honestly speaking. Now, I do enjoy the occasional drive-in, and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say I don't like going to the theaters. I just don't like movie theater prices. Who the hell does, honestly? But when you're able to go out watch a good ass movie and enjoy yourself you know without thinking about how much you spend you know hey i just threw down six thousand dollars at the movie theaters (laughs) to go watch (laughs) oh man let me let me wait let me finish the joke (laughs) let i just threw down six thousand dollars just to go watch the lion king remake like (laughs) Like, what is this bullshit? (laughs) Oh, man. But, yeah, it's just, this is a game changer for sure. No more of this whole, you're paying 
car note prices just to go to the movies for like two hours and end up hating the movie that you're watching. No more paying cell phone bill prices for concession stand food that was sitting there for like damn near three hours and they just stale as fuck. No more of walking into a theater, dark ass, stinky ass, sticky ass theater that is filled with gum when you could just put gum on your own floor by yourself. Like, if that's your kind of thing to do. But yeah, you could do all this shit at home. You could finally do this shit at home. You know, if you're somebody that likes to go to a theater and jerk off like Pee Wee Herman, you could do that shit at home. (laughs) Oh, man. But anyway, I am going to go ahead and take a break real quick. And when I come back, you guys, we're going to have a true crime story. Yeah. So as you should not say in a scary movie, I'll be right back. And we are back. And if you're still rocking with your boy, you know, you can find me on the social media. Uh, Walter Doom on Instagram and Walter Doom one on Twitter. Oh, yeah. OK, you know, what? <laughs> that was a little too much cringe right there. Um, You know, y'all know I'm not usually like this on the podcast, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a new different attitude. I mean, 2020 has really taught me like. Dude, you can't really hold back how you are, you know, and I've been doing a lot of self-discovery lately, you know, um, and I just said I wouldn't even be using, you know, <laughs> but I've been doing like a lot of self-discovery lately, you know, just like self-reflection, self-thought about like who I am and what I want to accomplish and just things I've been dealing with in my life and what I do don't want to deal with you know things that I want to fix and everything like that and yeah I mean one thing I know for sure is that I want to stay here with you guys you know and and I'm gonna be here no matter what (laughs) no matter what unless I get canceled that then just shit (laughs) or I get married and yeah (laughs) then i mean if i get married i mean that that just means yeah shows over people (laughs) nah i hope that doesn't happen if if that ever happens you know i just want to stay here talking about horror with you guys i love horror to to the core and you know my biggest thing has always just been like wanting to talk about horror movies with anybody that wants to talk about it and one thing that would I would really love to appreciate is that, you know, anybody that's the same melanin as myself, or if you are like a young or old, because, you know, apparently some of my audience is a little bit older. I mean, I'm an older guy myself, you know, we're probably in the same age bracket and you're listening to me and I really do appreciate it. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you love horror, I mean, I'm just trying to like create a community, man. That's about it, you know, and just click up with other horror fiends like myself. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, but if you want to click up and and talk about some things, find me on my social media. (laughs) You know how those lame people that be like really over exaggerating their voices just to get followers or get listeners to stay listening to them? They'd be like, <laughs> like, okay, I know I didn't make any words, but <laughs> they'd just be like, hey, this is your buddy on this dick, and you are listening to On This Dick Podcast, Ooh, and we are on plenty of dicks tonight, oh yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, you're just listening like, damn, dude, that was so many dicks that you just said in one sentence. How many dicks are you on? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, 
it's, it's it's that weird stuff, man. Like I I just don't understand it sometimes. But I mean, I get it. It's one way to keep the listeners engaged, and I'm trying. And I'm I'm hope I'm hoping that I'm keeping you guys engaged, even with all the stumbling, mumbling, and stuttering. Because you guys know sometimes I stutter a lot on this show. <laughs> Well, I get more jumbled up on my words than anything else, but I'm trying to get better with it, you know, and stop using, you know, a lot. (laughs) But I'm talking to you guys as as if you guys are in front of me or girls, you know, the doom mets out there, you know, doom heads and doom mets. (laughs) I think that's what I'm going to call you guys from now on. My doom heads and my doom mets. I don't know. I've been trying to think of a work, a name for my followers and everything. So, I mean, if y'all fuck with the doom heads and doom mets, I mean, hey, go ahead and say I fuck with it. <laughs> but, I mean, on another note, I mean, we are running into like our first hour of the show. Which I am actually surprised because when I was writing out this outline, I did not think I would be taking this long to get through this show. You know, I thought this was going to be like a quick 45 minutes or what have you. But we're out here doing this thing. You know, we out here. We out here in these streets today. In these streets. These podcast. Uh, what the fuck am I trying to? You know, we in these podcast streets. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, but I'm already fucking up on on what I was trying to say. So I'm going to just leave all the jokes alone. <laughs> um, But anyway, all goofiness aside, this, this story, because we are going into like some true crime stories. This next segment is a little bit more serious and a little bit more morose for just anybody, you know, dealing with a death in the family especially if somebody was murdered in your family um this one kind of touched my heart a little bit because it happens well it happened here in my hometown of LA and the thing about this story it's about a kid that just you know he had so much hopes and dreams and he comes from a family where like he was definitely like out there to help his family for the better you know he always had the best interests for his family all he wanted to do was write for everyone and just get a career and support his family in the end. Well, this year he was senselessly murdered for reasons unknown. Um, I tried to find reports about this, but couldn't find anything. So I am going to go ahead and tell you guys a story right now. And this is going to be a true crime story story streets of la the story of juan hernandez murder thanksgiving a time of being thankful for everything you have and everyone around you whether it's family friends a romantic partner or a new job we give thanks for these blessings each year not for Yajera Hernandez, the mother of recently murdered victim Juan Carlos Hernandez, where this year the only blessing she hopes for is justice. On September 22, 2020, Juan Carlos Hernandez, a college student of El Camino Community College, was clocking out of VIP Collective, a marijuana dispensary on the corner of Western and 81st Street in South L.A. Before he took off in the 2020 Honda Civic, his mother let him drive to work. He texts her at 10 o'clock p.m. letting her know that he will be home soon. This is not an unusual behavior by the 21-year-old that goes by the nickname Cookie because for Hernandez, family always came first. An ambitious engineer major whose dream was to transfer to USC, his hometown school, which he was one semester away from transferring, So when Juan Carlos did not return home that night of September 22nd, Yajira knew something instantly was wrong. Two days later, confirmed Yajira's fear when her 2020 Honda Civic was discovered abandoned on the 6400 block of South Figueroa Street, two miles away from the now-closed dispensary where Hernandez worked. Now, let me take a break for a second, you guys. 
this is such a weird story, by the way, by the the research that I've done. Um, I actually Google Maps where the fuck this dispensary was. And I got to say, this this is some weird ass shit. Like the simple fact that this dude clocked out of his job and this dude drives to this block or his car, well, the car gets discovered from two miles, well, two miles away from, like, where he worked. The question I have is, like, what was going on that night when he was clocking out? Now, I know i would seen, like, because I actually Googled up, um, the dispensary when I was looking up this story and it's funny because like on the Yelp reviews all people are going ham people are really talking shit and saying how sketch that the dispensary themselves did nothing to actually help the family with like the the situation and that they were the dispensary was claiming like their cameras weren't really working that night when the when the disappearance happened so i mean it's real freaky that just like all of a sudden you know somebody goes missing all of a sudden it's just oh well you know our cameras don't really work but it's like what are the cameras there are they there for just for show And it's like, do you control the cameras on the streets, too? It's like, come on now. But, I don't know. It's a weird situation. And it seems almost kind of fishy because just for the simple fact that his car was discovered two miles away from where he was last seen. So, it kind of begs the question, like, okay, what was going on that night? Moving on. It was a strange behavior by the then 21-year-old who is usually responsible. Now suddenly doesn't come home and nobody knows his whereabouts. The only trace of him was captured by street cameras in the dispensary who claimed at the time when questioned that their cameras no longer had the footage of that night. Now the only thing Yahira has left of Juan is the eerie heartfelt message that now leaves chills and questions of what happened that night. Like her son, who was very ambitious about achieving his goals in life, Yahiva's goals is now to find her son, hopefully alive. Los Angeles is such a big city. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yahiva describes to a reporter from the Los Angeles Times. After police found her abandoned Honda Civic, Yahiva worked quickly in trying to find her son. It was only a week when she received a phone call from an anonymous caller who claimed to have information about her son good news was what she thought until the caller threatened the family for payment in return for her son's safety my first mistake was using my real number she said to the reporter fortunately for her LA detectives were able to reveal and arrest the extortionist who was trying to exploit the family during a vulnerable time which later revealed that it had no connection to Juan Carlos's disappearance. Now, let me take a break again. That to me is some scumbag shit right there. Honestly. Like who the fuck wastes a family's time to do that and then they don't think like they're not going to be punished for their actions. Like get, like what the fuck was this person thinking? Like, did they really just, like, sat there and was thinking, well, it's COVID season, no one gives a fuck, I ain't getting no money, so you know what, I'm gonna extort this family for everything they got because they good for it. You know, to me, that's just some real scumbag shit. Like, that, like, you deserve to go to jail. Like, her son has disappeared. Her son was kidnapped. And it's like, you, the first thing you're thinking is, well, let me fool this family into thinking like I have this kid. 
maybe I'll get some money out of it and whatever, whatever. Like that, that to me got to be the stupidest criminal ever. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. That got to be the stupidest criminal ever. It was November 15th. A few days before Thanksgiving is when Yahida received the devastating news from two robbery homicide detectives. Located in a shallow grave off Afton Canyon Road near Interstate 15 in Barstow lay Juan Carlos's lifeless body, discarded in the cold desert like a piece of garbage. This isn't the outcome we ever wanted or thought we'd get, she tells the Times reporter. No one in Los Angeles who knew about the missing 21-year-old didn't want this result either. Um, Let me take a pause right here. Now, this kid's posters has been hung up. And if you're from L.A. and and specifically the South L.A. area, but I mean just anywhere around L.A. Because I think this mom really went around like a lot of the greater parts of L.A. and posted a lot of posters about this kid. I mean, she was really trying to find her son. And whoever did this, I mean, as we will learn, like the suspects will be arrested in the story. But I think these people panic. You know, I mean, it's just like it's crazy because this kid was missing since since September. And his body gets found in November close to Thanksgiving. To me, it tells me that when these people heard the reports, and I'm pretty sure this has been on the news several times. I wouldn't be surprised, but this was in several newspapers, news outlets, um, social media i mean and like i said the posters about this kid was hanging everywhere and they're still hanging everywhere to this day whatever these people wanted from this kid well they panicked and they thought the best thing they could do was take his life which is something we were hoping wouldn't happen now I would I wouldn't say this was something that was foreseen because I mean no one wants to see their kid get murdered but I mean the kid was missing for like a couple of months and you know there's a science to like you know if somebody isn't found in like a certain number of weeks or days you know they might already be dead which is something we don't want to think about if it is our own loved ones but yeah, this this really touched my heart like uh, by a lot because I'm just thinking like, well, you know, what if I had a son and this happened to him or if I had a daughter and this happened to her? I mean, it's, this this story is very heartfelt. But I'm going to go on. Um, Although this isn't the result Yahira was hoping for after countless protests at City Hall, countless posters spread across the greater Los Angeles area, and Juan Carlos's birthday passing in October. By the way, she spent his birthday missing. Like, he was missing on his birthday. She feels blessed that the body of the ambitious 21-year-old that the family called Cookie was discovered and the suspects arrested. All right. Um, the one thing I got to say about this story, it's, it's a very devastating story. And I mean, I don't even wish this upon anybody, honestly. There's a lot of sick people out there. Um, but I don't know what is the motive i mean the motive is still unknown even after these people are arrested hopefully we get something like coming in the next couple of weeks because these guys are going to and it's a male and a female that got arrested by the way it's two people a male and a female and i believe the female she was arrested for conspiracy or um she was trying to destroy evidence or what whatever I can't remember what she was arrested for, but she was trying to like basically 
I guess, tamper with evidence. That's what it was. She was trying to tamper with evidence. But, yeah, I mean, I guess detectives knew who they were and they were keeping close ties to them. I mean, honestly speaking, I feel like these are people that were probably working at the dispensary with the kid. Hence why the dispensary probably had to close down because of just this incident happening but yeah I mean mean, let's take a moment right now and just like have a moment of silence for this kid you know let's let's have a moment of silence for Juan Carlos Hernandez and his family right now all right so what I'm about to do, you guys, right now, I am about to take another break. And when we come back, I am going to get into the outro. Oh, yeah. This is DJ Easy Dick. Okay, I can't remember how that goes. <laughs> oh, man. But um, we are definitely into the outro right now, you guys. And this is usually the time where I talk about a must-watch Tubi movie of the week. But stated earlier, I have no movie for you. But I will say this. We are talking about Netflix, HBO Max, and just talking shit about it a lot. So here's the thing. If you have Netflix, check out his house if you have not checked out his house yet. His house is a fucking masterpiece. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece, but it's a really good film. It's very solid. Um, It deals with like these refugee families that, well, this refugee husband and wife, I should say. And they are pretty much escaping to the UK. And they pretty much take asylum there. And when they are taking asylum, they are moved into this house. Now, what's happening in this house is that they are being haunted by some spirits of their past life. So what ends up happening is that they have to confront this past life in order to get the ghost or not the ghost, but the spirits to go away. So, I, yeah, this was a very good film. I believe there's, like, an actress that's on here. She plays, she's the main actress in this movie, but she plays a character in Lovecraft Country. And, honestly, I have not watched that show yet, by the way. <laughs> so, I know I'm slacking on a lot of things right now, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you horror fans right now are probably going to give me shit in the comments section, which you should. What you should if you're listening to me on YouTube. But if not, give me shit on social media. Nah, don't give me shit on social media. You might get blocked that way. <laughs> By the way, if you're not following me on social media, yeah, social media would be, again, Walter Doom on Instagram and Walter Doom 1 on Twitter. So, yeah. um, Yeah, on Netflix, definitely check out his house, HBO Max definitely watch fucking ready or not and just not because i'm saying like you need to see it i'm just saying because of sam weaving <laughs> oh man <laughs> i need to stop but um yeah definitely um check out ready or not i mean we talked about scream earlier but if you guys are into radio silence or if you guys want to know what radio silence does with their films ready or not is the film to check out but other than that that's pretty much the end of the show i don't know how this was for you guys but i'm pretty sure this was a good comeback right now and i think i'm about to bring more of this this nice little little heat for y'all you know (laughs) But, um, yeah, we are going to sign out for today. Again, if you want to follow me, Walter Doom on Instagram, Walter Doom one on Twitter. But right now, I am going to sign out because it is late as fuck. 
for me while recording this probably early for you while you're listening to this i want to say thank you to all the listeners if you are not subscribed definitely subscribe to me if you're not following me please follow me <laughs> nah let me stop let me stop but um definitely subscribe you know apple spotify google anchor youtube whichever one you listen to me on subscribe 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 and this is me signing out for the day of another episode of let's talk about horror i am your host walter doom this is my show i hope you fuck with me again see you in hell bitches <laughs> no i'm kidding that that's that's not the outro this is america don't let them catch you slipping now peace see you in hell bitches all right now that's gonna be the intro that's gonna be the intro from now on you guys by the way and i don't really mean see you in hell but since this is a horror show see you in hell